Well, this is the annual in-house gathering of our party leadership of our assembly reps, our Octus members, European and Westminster teams, and from local councils. And it's an opportunity for us to discuss party strategy, policy, and organization, and to map out our plans for the upcoming period. So let's talk about the journey and the challenges ahead of us. In this state, the Fine Gael minority government, propped up by their friends in Fianna Fáil, has carried on where the last government left off, creating crises in our public services and failing ordinary people. This is the most dysfunctional government here since partition that brought forward the least amount of legislation of any doll, that completely failed to deal with the crisis in the Guardi, in our health services and in housing provision. They have no real strategy for dealing with Brexit and their allies in government, Fianna Fáil, now want to return to the Galway tent politics that almost destroyed the economy. So let's be very, very clear. If these parties won't deal with the challenges, Sinn Féin will. In a little over 12 months, in the Oireachta, Sinn Féin brought forward more than 50 pieces of legislation. And we intend to keep this momentum going in the time ahead, legislating on issues affecting citizens and their daily lives, and providing an alternative to the unfairness of Fine Gael being a foil rule. In the North, both the DUP and the British government continue to refuse to agree that the executive and the assembly be restored on the basis of equality, respect and integrity for all. They also disrespect and ignore the vote of the people in the North in the Brexit referendum and are insisting on dragging the North out of the EU against the wishes of the electorate. In fact, the DUP have torn up propositions being developed with Sinn Féin and others on Brexit in favour of the Tory government's Little Englander approach. At the same time, politics are in flux and in transition. Just as unionism now has less than 50% electoral support in the North, and the notion of a perpetual majority is gone, the same is increasingly true of Fianna Fáil and Fine Gael. More and more people are standing up for their rights and for equality. More and more people are demanding change. But Leah Baradkar's vision for society, his Republic of Opportunity, is one where those who fall behind, for whatever reason, are left behind. The real message behind Taoiseach Baradkar's Republic of opportunity is aimed at, and it really is grand, for those who have opportunities. But if you're struggling, if you're homeless, if you're sick, if you're poor, if you have a disability, if you're unemployed or badly paid, then Leo is very clear. Don't look to the government for answers or solutions. You're on your own. Leo's vision is for a May fame system. And that's the way it has been here for decades. There have been governments for the financial speculators, governments for the bankers, governments for property developers, governments for prelates and hierarchies. And these governments are for the wealthy and for the elites. What is needed now is a government for citizens. Such a government would invest and world-class public services and develop a vibrant, sustainable economy that works for people instead of against them. Such a government would be an accountable government, a government grounded in basic common decency, which acts. If someone is in trouble, it acts to help them. If someone is in trouble, it picks them up. If someone is in danger, it protects them. That's the sort of government that is needed, a government for equality. And make no mistake, Sinn Féin wants to be in that government. We want to transform politics on this island. We have no ambition whatsoever to be part of the system. Our ambition is to change it. And that means we must be in government north and south. 
Last week, figures for Dublin revealed another rise in the number of families and children living in emergency accommodation. There are over 90,000 households on local authority waiting lists, and almost 8,000 people are living in emergency accommodation, including 3,000 children. One in three people experiencing homelessness in this state as a child. So how can this crisis be ended? The answer is obvious. The state needs to build homes for its citizens. That's what Sinn Féin will do in government. That means turning away from the May Féin, the Galway tent politics that created the crisis in the first place and then made it worse. Sinn Féin will not manage the housing crisis. Sinn Féin will end it. Not in terms set by the market, or through tax cuts for developers, as proposed by Fianna Fáil, or on terms set by those holding on to land banks. Sinn Féin will build homes. We will deliver a social and affordable housing programme. We will implement a plan to get the thousands of vacant properties back into use. And Sinn Féin will introduce rent certainty and security of tenure by linking any increases to an index such as the Consumer Price Index. And we will do this because we believe that everyone has the right to a home. Those parties who have been in government for decades now are responsible for the shameful and disgraceful state of our health systems. Despite the huge efforts and hard work of our health workers, the reality is that our health service is a mess. The dreadful plight, the indignity of elderly people, children, and the very sick being left on trolleys, sometimes for days, are part of the everyday narrative of life for ordinary people in this state. This week, the Irish nurse and midwives organisations revealed that the level of overcrowding in our emergency departments is at a record high. In July, waiting lists for surgery stood at almost 700,000 people. Ten times almost the capacity of Croke Park. So who's to blame? Being a foil, Fine Gael, Labour are to blame. Let's be certain and clear about that. Sinn Féin has the vision, the policies and the political will to end the crisis in our hospitals and to build the health services people need and deserve. And that means ending the trolley crisis in our emergency departments through proper investment and resourcing of community care. We are absolutely committed to creating a public health system based on the need and on health needs and funded by progressive taxation. Health care, like housing, should be a right for all citizens and not a privilege for the well-off. And that needs to be the starting point. That needs to be the principle. That needs to be the objective. It's all about equality. It's all about citizens' rights. It's all about a rights-based society. And the right to a home and to health care is a fundamental part of this. So too, there must be protection and support for farmers, for families, for businesses that are victim of environmental disasters. Last week, with well, Seanador, Patrick McLaughlin, and I visited Inishon and Derry to see for myself the extent of the damage and to speak to the victims of the recent floods. And two years ago, it was down in Carrigan Shannon, it was Clare, it was Galway, it was Louth, who faced the trauma of coping with the damage and disruption caused by floods. This government, like the one before it, is in default of its international commitment to cut emissions that contribute to global warming. This government has still not produced the flood risk management plans that are required under the EU Floods Directive, which came into force in 2010. This government has not put in place insurance cover for families, businesses and farmers faced with the ever-present threat of flooding. In this government, and I want to commend the efforts of neighbours, of communities, of council workers, of the first responders, of the Defence Forces of Angardi, this government has not matched their efforts. Indeed, Daniel O'Donnell and his country and Western friends have done more 
for the beleaguered people of any shown than the Taoiseach. Brexit, Brexit remains the most serious social, economic and political threat to the island of Ireland and to our people for a generation. The people of the North voted against Brexit. The Irish government has a responsibility to defend that vote and to act in the best interests of all the people of this island, regardless of their politics or other preferences. This government has a responsibility to defend the Good Friday Agreement which Brexit threatens and to ensure that EU citizens living in the North continue to have their EU rights protected after Brexit. The policy positions, we have seen them in the last few weeks, unveiled by the British, including leaving the customs union, will cost jobs, will undermine the two economies on this island. The decision by the British Labour Party to seek continued British membership of the single market and the customs union during any transitional arrangement, that's welcome. But the Irish government should insist, and the Taoiseach should make clear, at the EU summit in October, that failure by the British to make progress must mean that the Brexit negotiations are not ready to move to the next stage of discussions. It's also time for the government to accept that the best protection for the island in any post-Brexit arrangement is for the North to be designated special status within the European Union. It's also worth noting that Brexit has re-energised and reshaped the debate about a united Ireland. And that demands new thinking, it demands a new approach aimed at unlocking unionist opposition to a new future by reminding them of their positive contribution that they have made to society on this island. And instead of concentrating on the negative aspects of our four centuries of shared history, I suggest that we embrace the areas of agreement, of cooperation, of good neighbourliness and common good. And I would encourage everyone to join in this debate and in this discussion. Sinn Féin is also seeking the support of all parties and none in the Oireachtas for a Committee on Irish Unity. We will be bringing forward a white paper on unity and we want to see a referendum on unity in the next five years. And we believe that this is achievable and we believe that this is winnable and we believe that this should be government policy. Just deal briefly with the crisis in the north and I just want to say for the record that contrary to the bogus argument being put by some, it is obviously, and it should be self-evident, that Sinn Féin is fully committed to the power-sharing institutions agreed in the Good Friday Agreement. In the face of disrespect, inequality, and an absence of integrity by some, in the face of the failure to implement previous agreements, and in the throes of the renewable heat incentive scandal, Martin McGuinness took the right decision and he resigned. And his stand was vindicated in the Assembly and the Westminster elections. Last week's proposal by the DUP leader, Arlene Foster, for a parallel process is a non-runner. And she knew this. It came during a period when Michelle O'Neill was engaged with the other leaders, including Arlene. But it did contain a welcome acknowledgement that the Irish language threatens no one. And I'm sure that the crocodiles are delighted to hear that. And it did include a promise of legislation. So Coram Falsha Riv and Aharu Shin. And that's also welcome. But more than soft words are required. Michelle O'Neill has called for a short time frame period of exploratory talks to determine whether progress is possible or not. So if the DUP is serious, let them engage in that process. But so that there's no ambiguity, let me repeat what I said last week. There will be no return to the Assembly or the Executive without a standalone Irish Language Act and agreement on the resolution of other outstanding issues. As you all know, you're part of it. Sinn Féin is finalising our 10-year plan. This has been the focus of much internal discussion for the last year. And it's about preparing the party for the next 10 years. And it's about trying to ensure that we're better able to achieve our strategic objectives and to serve those people who depend upon us. 
And at this event, in this very venue last year, Martin McGuinness made it clear that we also had a plan for orderly leadership change. Now, none of us knew that Martin would become terminally ill and that we would meet this year without him. And we don't have time to reflect on these mysteries of life and death this morning or on the loss of such a wonderful comrade and leader. Suffice to say that we miss him deeply. But it is our intention to unveil at the Ardesh in November the plan that he helped to formulate. And I will be allowing my name to go forward for the position of Uchtaran Sinn Féin once again. And if elected, I will be setting out our priorities and in particular our planned process of generational change, including my own future intentions. So, Sinn and Medj, let me remind you again that Sinn Féin electorally is at our strongest position since the 1918 elections. Over half a million citizens have voted for our party in recent elections. We had two outstanding elections this year in the North, and it's a credit to everyone in this room and across this island who are members of, who worked for, who stood for, and who voted for Sinn Féin. It also brings a huge responsibility to job, to upper, to rowing, solar. So we have to continue working hard for our communities, for the political institutions. We have to convince more people that change is possible and that we are a vehicle for that change. We have to work with others who might not agree with us on all issues, but who agree with us on some issues. I also expect the referendum to repeal the Eighth Amendment will be held soon, and Sinn Féin will campaign strongly for a yes vote. It's about putting women first. The Eighth Amendment is a relic of the past. It has to go. It has to be replaced with compassionate legislation. Sinn Féin will campaign enthusiastically and energetically for the Eighth Amendment to, repeal, to be repealed. And I would urge all of those who oppose inequality and discrimination to join in this. In conclusion, let me encourage all of you to engage fully in the discussion and in the conversations we will have today and tomorrow. I want to thank all of the team who put this event together so that we will have the fullest debates on the most important issues and challenges facing Irish society today. So, Binigi Salt As, Dolanyak, Gohamlan, Leshna, Deesparak, Debe, Ogin, and you, August Amarok, August Gombehis, Lesh, our foreign accord, and Kodal Shah Lahela. Go may desprakt ogin or an duslan as takti ata in eran fui lahar. Gurumila my ogov gulyar comrades.